Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the GameDev.TV Community Podcast. I'm your host KB, and this podcast brings you the audio experience of GameDev.TV. Now, let's get right into the podcast. Okay, so um, my name is Rubina Frenzel, and I'm a 3D creature artist since I think like over five years now. Um, and I'm coming from Germany and yeah, I mostly work in the video game industry and for some board games and stuff. So yeah, actually that's my, my main thing because I'm a big gaming nerd. I have a lot of stuff here (laughs) in my bag for games. So, uh, (laughs) this is actually what drove me to be an artist uh, in the first place, but yeah, video games are definitely my favorite. No, I could see that definitely with all the stuff in the background and the, the Mario <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, how did you get started with uh, drawing? What was like your first memory? So, actually, I think that's the most boring question ever uh, because. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nice. laughs> <laughs> because I mean, I guess every artist kind of starts when they were a kid, right? So. Um, I think I was, I think it was two or something when I started drawing. Um, I did that a long, long time, but sadly I stopped it a little bit when I was in my teenager years because, you know, um, as a teenager you have different things in your mind. Um, so... Yeah, I drew a lot when I was a kid and uh, a lot of animes and mangas. And um, one thing I can remember is when I drew some treasure maps with my sister when I was in the holidays. (laughs) I love that so much. Um, I think that's why I love pirates (laughs) nowadays. Um, Yeah, but I think that's where I started just... Um, doing some animes and manga stuff, yeah. Okay, and then from there you went to school for drawing or art? Um, I was actually in a media design school in the first place. Okay. Um, and then I went to a 3D school. At that time we didn't really had um, a 3D school here in my place. Mm-hmm. But um, after... I think it was one year. I was one year jobless, kind of, um, after I went to the 3D school. It is uh, so horrible. Um, But um, yeah, I went to that 3D school and then I think it was for 15 months. And that's it, yeah. And then what did you learn there? There's just like, did you learn fundamentals? What was it like? Um, so for my uh, media design school, it was just yeah. random teachers. Um, and for my 3D school, there were actually professionals in the um, in the school there who teached us online. And yeah, it was sadly the school just opened, so um, everything was just basic. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but um, yeah, I learned I learned the basics i would say i'm not really a fan of 3d schools um okay. because you know i i think in these days it's definitely more worth it to learn for yourself um you have so many opportunities for free art um, tutorials and stuff and i think all the money is not worth it. I mean, a lot of 3D schools are so expensive. And um, I think it's not worth it to pay your school debt for 30 years or so. And um, yeah, I think we have different opportunities now. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. And then, no, would you say you learned the most? Did you say, learn most from like going to school or from learning on your own self-education? Definitely self-education. I mean, I started working with Photoshop. That was my um, first software. uh, And uh, I think I 
worked with that, I don't know, many, many years since I was uh, then in the 3D school. But yeah, most of the stuff I know now and I use now is definitely self-taught. Yeah. You you were mentioning you were a big fan of anime and manga and things like that. Uh, did you find yourself spending a lot of time just kind of like sketching characters from those from those uh, from those books? I did in the past. Um, I have to say that I don't really watch animes and read mangas a lot now, um, and I'm I don't really do characters. I mean, animes are most of the time characters, right? Um, but I'm more in creatures and monsters and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah. But I think I well, have saying... like I Sorry. have like kind of a style from manga, I guess. Sometimes, definitely. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I really think so. That's what I took a, when I had a look for your work earlier. You can definitely see that shining through. I think. And it's, I'm not surprised that you said that that's where you started at all. Yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I drew my own mangas and stuff. It was pretty oh, fun. But, uh, yeah. Sadly, like I said, I didn't, I, I didn't drew all the time. Um, I definitely regret that when I was a teenager that I stopped that because I would be way better now. But uh, yeah, I think doing 3D is my favorite. But I wished I would have more time for drawing as well. But, you know, there's so much to learn. You can't really do anything. So <laughs> oh, I feel Very that true. with the programming. So yeah. much to learn, but it's like, oh, so much. <laughs> when am I going to do it all? Yeah, yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever you felt like you were stuck, how did you move past that? When Like you were learning how to draw and do 3D art? <sighs> to be honest. I'm stuck every week. <laughs> and when someone, when someone is telling you they never really get stuck, then I don't know. That's not really true. <laughs> They're I, lying. Lying. They're lying. Yeah. So. They're lying. <laughs> I mean, I get stuck, like I said, every week, maybe every day. But I really have to say that it's a mindset thing, um, because it is like, it is like depression. You can't really get rid of this. You have to deal with it. So this is the same thing. When you get stuck in your art, then you really have to get through it and uh, learn how you have um, the chance to come over this. And this has a lot to do with um, caring for your mindset and caring what you think and stuff like that. Yeah. You have um, you wrote a, a book um, <laughs> that I had to look at on your website. <laughs> which sort of goes into goes into that kind of crossover with creativity and mental health. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? What sort of drove you to write, pen a book on that subject? <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm not really, I mean, I'm kind of an author because I really like um, texting, but, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm there, there are four things um where you can go right you can do um where you can express yourself over images over text over audio or over video and i'm definitely someone who do this with images and um texting mm -hmm. so um i wrote this book because i thought i could help a lot of people i mean i was in that um situation as well i had a lot of depressions i have a lot of anxiety um i'm afraid of actually everything so uh yeah it's hard to deal with it in this industry especially and i i see that all the time when i look at social media on twitter instagram whatever um that so many artists struggle with mental health um mm -hmm. and i think it's not only artists but uh, i really wanted to help the people with telling my stories and you know those kind of situations and this is why I wrote this book I actually don't really know if this helped anybody but yeah <laughs> that was going to be my question uh, do you do you know how what the engagement's been like with it has anybody contacted you saying that it's been a helpful resource or 
anything like that or do you think people just use it as a tool and then they sort of they glide away with, with peace because they're, <laughs> well, they're so informed well that's the problem of uh, people i guess they read something <laughs> and then they say oh yeah that's cool and then one week yeah. later totally forgetting it uh, but yeah i got some messages from uh people who um who said to me that they are reading it the third time now and that they that it really helped them um and even when i write blogs or something it really helps people and i get a lot of messages um even from people who just say thank you for listening just listening uh is a huge help for people so mm -hmm. yeah great yeah really no, i think yeah i think that's wonderful because when i was younger too i felt the same way where it's like i'm afraid of everything but let me just push through and now I want to be the example for people. Same thing. I think that's beautiful what you're doing. You should continue to do that because I've, I have friends who are artists who are like, I'm afraid. Like, I don't want to put my artwork out there. I'm like, your artwork is 10 times better than anything I could do. Just put it out there. People are going <laughs> to love it. Just, just go. True. Just do it. Like, yeah. So that's awesome. I'm happy for that. Yeah. It reminds me, reminds me of something a friend of mine who was a guitar player said to me once. He said, "You know, the thing about writing music is, he was actually talking about why he why he smokes weed, and he was like, the reason why I smoke weed is because it helps me get the demons out." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Well, you know, there's demons in my head, and that's how I get rid of them. I play them in music." Right? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I can totally understand that. Yeah, that's fun. But yeah, I. A lot of the your Instagram posts as well have sort of little tips and tricks and breakdowns of your method. Is that just kind of an extension of trying to help the community and help other people sort of exp express themselves? Yeah, I mean, it definitely turned out to be another interest or more passion for me. Um, in the first place, I was just an artist and I wanted to create amazing art pieces. But I think... I drive more and more to the direction of helping people and to understand them. And I really love listen to stories to just um, learn more about other people. And I think the more you learn and the better you can listen to people, the better you can help. And I think everybody needs that every day, right? I need some kick in my ass every day as well. So... I think that's a good thing, even when it's just a quote. I mean, everybody can interpret a quote differently, right? It's just a mm -hmm. quote. But for some people, I get messages like, I really needed that today. Thank you. And this is just enough for me to do that every day, even when it's just um, reaching out to 10 people or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. No, I've noticed, too, with Instagram, it will put the right post at the right time whenever you need it. Maybe when I'm feeling down, there'll come a post, I'm like, well, I really needed that today. So it's mm -hmm. like, sometimes, yeah, these quotes, just put them out there and occasionally they'll hit the right person at the right moment and you'll help that person more than you can imagine. Right, and I mean, I I don't only do it for the people, I do it for myself as well, mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I need it too, <laughs> oftentimes, so, mm -hmm. of course. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, self-care is very important. Yeah. Oh, yes. Very important. Especially at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, we can, we, we need that all the time, especially in these days. Yeah. Definitely. Now I'm curious, how do you stay disciplined? Because I see you wanted to change that about yourself, more discipline. <laughs> 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 well, this is an all time struggle, I guess. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same. You can't be disciplined all the time. Uh, you know, every day staying up uh, is already hard to do. Um, but I think it is very important. I think it, everything comes back to your mind. Uh, that's just a very, very um, important thing in your whole body. Um, you have the most important part, why I'm so disciplined is I found my why. And I think it's so important to find your why in your life. Um, and it's not like, well, my why is to be rich or my why is to uh, do amazing art or be famous or whatever. The why goes deeper inside your heart and you really have to find it and dig to it. So, um, yeah, this is something why I keep 
being disciplined, definitely, to find mm-hmm. your why. Now, I'm curious, it probably wasn't an easy journey, but how would someone find their why? Um, so I read a book, I actually forgot the name of that book, uh, but it was from Dean Graziosi, I guess. And he talked about um, an exercise, what's called the seven steps of why. I think that was the name. And this exercise is you ask the question why you want to do that. And then you give an answer and why you want to do this answer. And, you know, you go, the, the questions are always this, why are you doing that? And you're doing that so many times. I mean, it's... Um, It's called seven steps of why, but you actually have to go more than that. Mm. Um, I did this exercise two times. The first time it didn't really affect me in any way. I said like, okay, that doesn't really work, whatever. But I did it a second time. And I think I asked myself 11 times or so why I want to do thing. And at the 11th question of why, I started crying because it really went to my heart what I said to myself and um, yeah at that point I knew that I found my why so and since then it definitely drives me to do a lot of things yeah that's beautiful in technology we call that root cause analysis Uh, that's actually something that's been around for a while I've never thought of using that on myself that (laughs) is a very fascinating concept yeah root cause analysis is all about determining the real reason why something happened like Mm -hmm. and as you say you know it it can be behind layers and layers of the onion (laughs) you gotta peel it back and find uh, Mm -hmm. what's really true that's amazing yeah I mean a lot of people say but when do you think you found it? And uh, I only can say, like, do it so many times and really take it serious. When you don't take it serious and you think, like, oh, that's just bullshit, but I can't do it, then mm-hmm. just don't start. You really have to believe in that. So, yeah. Okay. And what is your idea of, like, happiness in your field or even for yourself? Happiness in general mm-hmm. or in my career? No, just do your career. Um, happiness in my career. I definitely hope that I will um, can create amazing art, but also mentoring people to follow their dreams. I mean, it's always hard to follow their dreams because of situations or, you know, sometimes you just can't do it um, because you have to care for other people or you don't can't because financial reasons or whatever Mm -hmm. but um, I really hope that I can inspire people even when they have bad days or when they're feeling just I don't know I know that feeling of feeling unworthy or Mm -hmm. not ready enough or you know uh, I hope that I can inspire people by that and this is definitely something what makes me happy when I can Mm -hmm. um, when I can produce that into my work as well yeah so I'm interested to hear more about after school. You said there was a situation where you didn't work. Mm-hmm. What happened with that? So after, I think it was after my 3D school, mm-hmm. um, I didn't find really anything for the first month. Okay. Um, then happily, I got an internship in another city for six months, but I couldn't stay because um, they were, it was a very small company at that time and to be honest I didn't really felt ready to be alone in another city and Mm -hmm. that's why I went back to my parents I still live with my parents Um, but yeah and after I came back I thought like okay let's do it I can be a freelancer that's totally easy right doing stuff on your own but that was the most stupid thought um, and action I did because it's not so easy to do freelancing and that's why I was two years jobless but I'm happy that I'm a pretty stubborn person so I didn't give up (laughs) and then it finally worked out kind of yeah kind of I think it's working pretty great right don't you have a patreon 
And you, uh, how's that? How's the Patreon working for you? Uh, it is a, I would say, the side hustle at the moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, my main income comes from client jobs, um, and then I have my online shop on Gumroad, and I have Patreon, which brings a little bit. Um, and yeah, I think that's it at the moment. But I really want to bring Patreon and my online shop more into it okay. to get the passive income because, you know, my end goal is being an independent artist yeah. so I can work on my own stuff. I think that's pretty um, important for an artist to get your own ideas out and doing your own projects instead mm -hmm. of working all the time for other people and other ideas and so yeah oh, that's a dream for a lot of people yes working on their own <laughs> listening to themselves yeah <laughs> now those two years that you didn't you were jobless how did you get through all that was it the quotes self-motivation <laughs> stubbornness well i was i was definitely in depression at that time mm -hmm. um the thing is um i lived uh, by my parents mm -hmm. so I had the financial support for them I, I'm really grateful for that um, not everybody has the support I totally can understand that so people need to work somewhere um, to get you know money um, and I was like I said deep depression but I mean when you really love something you just don't stop right you just keep keep going and and do it and every i i believe that every bad situation has something good you only have to find it and because i didn't have a job i met a lot of cool artists because i was more on social media mm -hmm. i um, built up my instagram account uh, what brought me a lot of opportunities later on Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you were jobless and you were hanging out with other people who are also jobless, <laughs> also known as artists. Perfect, right? <laughs> Why not? Why not? Oh, no, Why not? <laughs> you have to make the best out of it, right? Yes. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so everything um, just turned out well because I didn't uh, had a job because mm -hmm. of that. And... Um, it's the same. I was, uh, I think, one year in another company after, I think it is two, two or one year ago, um, I was employed in a company to get my income and stuff. Um, sadly, I got laid off after a year because the company had financial um, struggles. And um, yeah, after that, I you know, went back home and I was totally depressed again. Like, okay, I lost my job again. I'm into it like three or four years and nothing works out. I don't got money. And, you know, you have your parents in your back and they're just saying, find another job. Don't be an artist. Um, this is stupid. You know, it is not really a good mental support. And it's hard when you're being on your own all the time, especially when you are more an introvert and you don't have too much friends who mm -hmm. support you as well. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that I kept going and that is good. And when you just come through depression and the good thing is in this two years, I learned so much for myself um, and to how, how I should deal with things when bad things come up. So um yeah, and when I was laid off to that job, mm -hmm. um, I said like, okay, it's over. Maybe I should do something else. But at this point, I got a really, really good opportunity from a job and I could do it when I still was working in this company. So actually, this bad situation turned out as good again. So mm -hmm. I highly can recommend for people when they are in a bad situation, there is something good about it. You just have to find it. So, yeah, it is hard, but um, <laughs> no, I know I... that. Well, yeah. yeah, it is definitely there, even when it's just so small. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Great piece of advice. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better. Than that. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs>
No, because I've seen it in, the, especially in the game, the, the TV community forums. I'll go and look at different students showcasing work, talking about stuff. And there's occasionally some people who'd be like, I feel like giving up because my project feels impossible. I feel like I have to do so many things or it's not working the way I wanted to or I got laid off for this things came up and it's it's hard to keep working on something that you really care about when you have other things like happening mm -hmm. but then if you look at the good thing like you said now that you got laid off you have the opportunity to go to that job it's just kind of like you have to reframe your mind to be like yeah. okay maybe this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me maybe losing yeah. my job was the best thing maybe my breaking up with someone was the best thing for me or maybe losing that money you never know yeah true it's the same like with the whole virus thing at the moment mm -hmm. Um, you can say like, okay, this is all so bad, but when you just look at the other side of it, you have so many opportunities you can do or you can redo or you can do differently or, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, just search for it. It is there. The light is always there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, without, without, dar without darkness, there's no light. That's definitely something I keep in my mind. Yeah. Very, very true, very true. Um, you were just talking about uh, you using social media. Is that one of the main ways? Because obviously your, your Instagram looks so polished. You've obviously spent a long time working on it. Um, and it just goes to show what you can do when you look at a bad situation. And you go, no, I'll just hone my craft instead of giving up. You know, mm -hmm. it's, a good, mm -hmm. it's a good thing to point towards. But do you tend to find that you get clients more through the social media side or how do people tend to approach you to um get you on board with the project yeah it's definitely social media, social media. so yeah um i have to say i applied i think once for a job but that's it <laughs> and every other job just got to me mm. and this is all through social media i'm on instagram i got some on twitter on LinkedIn a lot, um, sometimes on ArtStation, but not so much. But yeah, definitely Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn are my main uh, income stream. And of course, another thing is throughout other artists because they can recommend you when you're, um, I don't know, uh, when you are friends with them or, you know, something like that. So good connections is definitely one thing to get jobs and being active on social media. You don't have to be active every day, but I definitely recommend to have something out there in the internet, you know? I mean, nobody can find you when you are not there. I, I don't know if there's another artist on the other house, you know, in my neighborhood when I don't find anything about that person. Yeah. So yeah, just, just post your stuff and I know a lot of artists struggle with that you know like I'm not good enough I don't post my shitty things um, online but in my experience people love rough sketches and uh, work in progress shots more than the finished pieces <laughs> this is always the case so I definitely can say just post it and don't think about the other people I mean it's <laughs> Again, just the mindset thing. Um, so yeah, so it's social media is definitely something would keep me going in my business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Oh, yeah. And I love what you said. If, if you don't put your work out there, then how are they going to find you? Like, you can make the greatest art piece in the world, but if nobody sees it, what's true? What's point money wise. Now it's for you, of course, but if you're trying to make yeah. money. You got to let the world know. And that's true. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, does those two years that were kind of hard for you, did they inspire you with in your artwork now? Is there like maybe some type of inspiration for your art because of that? Um, I would say the thing is I was never really inspired by anything or mm -hmm. anybody. The only inspiration I got was um, to getting away from the real life because real life is sometimes hard and I guess we all have bad stories to tell from our childhood from our past um, and I think this is something I really liked and why I keep going with art at all 
because I wanted to hide in my art and um, I want to create my own world, a better world, I guess, mm -hmm. um, than the real world. So, yeah, that's why. No, I think that's a beautiful idea. Because I remember I was reading a book of something about how game designers are like happiness engineers. It's just something where it's like mm. a lot of the world that a lot of what game designers do is try to create a world that's happy, like that engineers happiness. Like the reason you play games is because you have goals and objectives and it makes it fun. Mm. And so it's like maybe as if we all can come together and do things to make the world better through art, through games, the way game designers make games fun. Maybe we can make the world more fun than it actually is now. So. Yeah, true. That's totally true. So that's uh, something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Reading books is always good. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It is good. I forgot what the book was called. But yeah. And then how did you get into creatures? Is it just you just love animals? Because you know you love pirates. So is there any pirate yeah. creatures you made? <laughs> She said monsters, so I think yeah. I think we're heading back more towards the demons thing. Tell me I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love everything. It doesn't matter if it's creepy or a cute creature. But um, I think I'm doing creatures because, like I said before, I'm an introvert. And I'm definitely not the most social person. And because of my childhood, I really love to be surrounded by animals. And I think that's why I'm so into creatures and nature, because this is where I get my energy from. I really, I really love it. I mean, I try doing characters and some environments and assets, but, uh, you know, like when you don't have fun doing it, um, it's not really good to, to make art. That's, I think that you should really do what you love when it comes to art and not what brings you um, the best job or something. Um, yeah, I mean, when you want to draw only dogs, then do that. <laughs> do that with passion, but do it, you know, yeah. Love that. Definitely. Do it with passion. Make yeah. the best <laughs> dogs you can ever make. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Be creative. <laughs> it's true. How long does it usually take to make, like, for instance, I see, like, a dinosaur on your Instagram, and it looks very detailed. How long would mm -hmm. that one take? Like, a, couple, a week, a month? So, this dinosaur was actually for a tutorial. Mm -hmm. So, it took me a few weeks because, not because of the creature, but to get my head around doing a tutorial. It is so hard to teach people. Um yeah. It is crazy, but uh, it was a great experience. But when I do those creatures, um, I it depends how the deadline is. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say when I take this dinosaur now in 3D, so fully modeled um, with low poly, high poly UVs texture, then I would say like two weeks, something like that. Okay. So when I work every day on it, but most of the time I have different kind of projects at the same time. And that's why it stretches a little bit because I have to do a little bit here. And it depends, of course, on the feedback when the client is pretty slow with feedback, then, you know, it can take a while to do something. I feel you. And what is your typical work schedule like? Uh, it's, it's funny because I have to rearrange that all the time. Um, I think it's bad when you only stick to one schedule because you have to look at your situation. Um, sometimes you feel more motivated, sometimes less. So you have to look at the schedule and take care of yourself. But I would say at the moment, I'm pretty inspired at the moment. I don't know why, but that's good. Um, mm -hmm. So my schedule at the moment um, looks like I wake up at 5.30, um, mostly 5, but 5.30 in the morning. And then I try to meditate. Sometimes I fall asleep again, but just maybe <laughs> two minutes. That's my experience. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it depends on how much I slept before. Um, but after the meditation, I stay up and jump in my um, workout clothes because if I still be in my pajamas the whole day, this doesn't make me any 
productive at all. <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hear all the time artists say like, I can work in my pajamas all the time. This is so good. Yeah. No, you can't because you're not productive, you know? It's it's just not good. So that's why I just wear something where I feel like I am awake or I am active or something. Uh, and then I have breakfast um, and then I sit down and do my to-do list for the day. Um, and then I have other notes here. I'm pretty organized with all my notes here. It's crazy. I have a, a whole whiteboard here with thousands of notes. Um, and I have my monthly notes here and I look at that every day to just keep in mind what is important, what I have to do, what I have to fulfill this month and stuff. And then I do my to-do list for the day and then I sit down for two hours and work um, because I'm mostly productive in the morning, uh, weirdly, because I'm definitely a night owl as a gamer and artist. <laughs> so um, yeah, and after that I do some workout um, going to the gym not right now but uh, doing just some activities to get your body moving um, and then I have a second breakfast because I'm always hungry um, and then I'm going back and uh, do two more hours of work and then I have lunch time and then I go back and have like four hours of work but it depends so if I have a day where I don't really feel inspired or motivated or I don't feel so good then I just cut out some hours because I really need to care for myself I know that when I don't care for myself I fall into depression or something or mm -hmm. burnout so I really have to care for that um, but if not then I work till six kind of and then I stay up do my dinner and relax time you know like the evening routine a yeah. little bit from six to uh, six to uh, ten no from six to nine and then I try to put uh, turn everything out and like the computer my phone and stuff and then I read something and then I go to bed and sometimes I try to meditate again but I'm mostly too tired for that so yeah wow sounds like a busy day yeah. At yeah. the moment, like I said, it's I am a huge procrastinator to be honest. Who is not? Okay. Yeah, right. So <laughs> yeah. um so sometimes I have day I really have days where I stay up and do two hours of work and then I just procrastinate the whole day. And that is definitely not good. But uh, yeah. yeah. We all have that. That's not so bad, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not at all. It's, at the moment especially you just have to be if you're feeling a certain way you've just got to be kind to yourself yeah that's the only way right mm -hmm. now that's true yeah yeah and you never know you might All feel right. bad today but then tomorrow <laughs> you wake up and you're like let's do 12 hours of work yeah exactly you just never know no this doesn't really work like that <laughs> 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 Some, sometimes 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 yeah, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I have that sometimes. I wake up and be like, let's go. And then the next day I'm like, nah, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> That's so true, yeah. Yeah. And it's weird too because I, nothing really changed. You just wake up and you're like, hmm, not mm. feeling it. Yeah, but well, like I said before, when you don't find your why, you are like, I when I don't have anything to stay up, why just don't sleep longer, you know? Yeah. This mm. is something you need to get up and to do things. Mm -hmm. so. There you go. Now you're motivating me. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck and kill you. Come to my page. I motivate everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my whole life has been changed today. I know I'm gonna know my why. Oh awesome. Let I'm me always... be your mentor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now back to the you said you were teaching and making a tutorial. Do you like teaching? or is it new uh, what is to be honest like a lot of artists i struggle myself with my art and my knowledge is not worth it to teach anybody and i actually never really felt ready to teach anybody at all um and i still struggle with that uh, i still think i don't know enough um to tell people you know what to do and not but um, this was actually a client project, this tutorial. 
-hmm. in my first tutorial ever. And, you know, I'm going with the quote like, don't make it perfect, make it done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really love that uh, quote yes. because I just jumped into it when I got this opportunity. I said like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And after I sent this email, I was like, oh, damn, I have no idea what to do. And I actually don't feel ready for it. But who feels ready, right? You mm -hmm. never feel ready at all. So you just have to jump into it. And, you know, don't be afraid of that. Just do it. Even when you do it to yeah. totally bad, just do it anyway. So... Yeah, I mean, it was it was cool. It was a cool experience. The client was very, very nice. They helped me along the way. Um, it took me actually two months to finish this. Uh, this was definitely not the best. Um, yeah, I was definitely not the fastest for that. But yeah. yeah, the client was cool. And that's that's all I need. Would you ever do it again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I, even when I uh, don't really think I'm, my, my knowledge is uh, worth it. But uh, yeah, I actually do this, uh, some tiny tutorials on my Patreon. So mm -hmm. I can try that a little bit with the slow public, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I definitely will do that more. I mean, I need to grow my Gumroad and my online shop and tutorials mm -hmm. are something what people need all the yeah. time. So, yeah, I have to overcome that. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> you believe in you. <laughs> now, something more about, like, art technology. Now, why should someone embrace new technology that comes out? For instance, like, the, the pads to write for, like, Photoshop or uh, mm -hmm. a Blender or the different technologies that most artists we use today. So, first of all, it is cool to just do new things. I mean, look at Unreal Engine. I'm a totally huge fan of retro games. Okay. So um, when you think about back when we have Pac-Man and now you see the games, this is incredible. And this is just made because of new technology, right? Mm -hmm. So it is pretty interesting to dive into it. I mean, most of the time you don't have time for anything to learn new things. I already use like I think like seven programs already as a 3D artist. And this is oh, so struggling sometimes to know everything, mm -hmm. um, what is actually impossible. But um, yeah, I really think like new technology is something you have to learn because of, you know, coming more into the jobs and everything is changing. The whole world is changing all the time. So you have to move with it, mm -hmm. right? To be up to date. And um, yeah. I think that's that's pretty important for that. No, you just said Unreal. Are you excited about Unreal Engine Five? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm. Uh, it looks cool, but I also see some some problems with that. So yeah, we have to go slow with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. No, but what problems do you see with it? Well, for example, for some for the rigging and animation parts. I'm I'm not really a technical person, yeah. um, but there are definitely it is definitely not the best um, for the workflows for artists. I think I mean they say like you can put I don't know thirty millions of polygons already from ZBrush into uh, mm -hmm. the Unreal Engine, but what about the textures? What about when you need to rig it? And, you know, we have our workflows at the moment and we need to slowly get into it. We can't just change it immediately. So yeah. it will work in the future, definitely. Like I said, the Pac-Man and today. Um, but yeah, it, it needs a little bit of time. It is. It was definitely a wow factor, mm -hmm. but you also have to be skeptical and need to think about it more. So... Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I like that too. It's like very optimistic, but also very skeptical. It's like mm -hmm. got to keep things in balance. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Well, it's yeah. like the alpha and the beta version, isn't it? There's always going to be problems with something when it just comes out, and then you know, gaming is such a tight knit community that it will sort of come across something and. You know, they'll work, will work the problems out as a community, essentially. That's mm -hmm. always what happens with these things. Mm -hmm. So you're right, yeah. we do need to be skeptical and be looking for these 
problems and solve them as a community, which we will. Yeah. Yeah. We will, definitely. That's yeah. not the point. Yeah, true. Yeah. Now, I know it says on your Instagram, it says you're an art director. Is that an art director for yourself or you work somewhere as an art director? <laughs> that was actually, or is actually, a funny thing. I never apply to being an art director I never was an art director and I never was planning to be one but I just felt into it kind of um I met a guy on Twitter and he's pretty professional um he's a rigging animation artist for many many years and I guess he saw my work on Twitter so he messaged me and we talked a lot and suddenly said like oh maybe we can work together um that would be cool and stuff and i was like yeah of course and he didn't really mention that i should be an art director or something mm -hmm. so i was like okay it's just a cool project with someone together um especially for someone who is definitely more experienced than i am um this is always good surround yourself with better people so you can grow more mm -hmm. and yeah, after we talked a lot, we, we actually got uh, pretty good friends now and um, it's really cool to work with him and I'm excited for all the things which will happen in the future with this whole project. But um, yeah, when he when he started um, working with me, he was like, oh, um, by the way, you are the art director of this whole project. I was like, well, what? What? I, I can't. I don't know what to do. And every time when we we're doing something, we just got something. Then um, he said, like, well, it's your choice, Rubina. You're the art director. You have to say what we have to do. And I'm like, I have no idea what to do. So um, I definitely can say that um, sometimes you just have to do things to learn it. So I never was an art director. I just have to do it to learn it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's that's important to know for a lot of beginner artists. Don't wait for the perfect time. Mm -hmm. Just do it and learn why you were doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I remember I was listening to a podcast and someone was talking about Neil Druckmann, the game designer for Not uh, Last of Us and Last of Us 2. And I think for the first Last of Us, they were like, they needed a game director. And they were like, does anybody, can anybody do it? And he was just like, I don't really, I'm not a game director, but like I could do it. I can learn acting. I'll, I'll, I'll learn. If, if I'm not good enough, you can replace me, but I, I'll do it. And mm -hmm. so he put himself in a situation, went out there, took acting classes, directing classes, writing classes, pushed himself. And then he became the Neil Druckmann we know today who made Last of Us and worked on Last of Us 2. It's just See, like, this is amazing. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. So just just do it, no matter if you have uh, any idea about it. Um, I mean, you can learn everything, right? Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you could. I don't know if it's going to be You could. <laughs> Until we <laughs> get the Matrix. Never easy. Until Elon Musk puts those neural links and he can just download information. <laughs> that would be the day. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, maybe in the future, maybe in 10, day, 10 years or so. 10 days? <laughs> <laughs> 10 days? Oh, why not? What do you know <laughs> that I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> A lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have any favorite uh, art pieces you made? I think I'm still in love with my um, Birds. <laughs> my dinosaur. <laughs> no, with my with my dinosaur set. I did I think 2017, like three years ago now. I still love this this thing because I did everything on my own, um, and it was really cool. And I still have dinosaurs. I mean, I have some figures here, uh, somewhere, <laughs> some dinosaur figures, and uh, yeah, I think that's my 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 piece. What I really like. If you want, you can show the piece. You can find it. My piece. Oh, let me see. I have actually. Um, I made a whole video about it. Oh, that's cool. Um, to I actually, like I said, I did everything about it. The cutting, mm -hmm. the the um, the not really the animation. I had some help with the animation. Um, a friend of mine did that, but everything else and. It was pretty cool. Um, do I have it here? I actually don't know if I can find it so That's quick. Fine, don't worry. <laughs> That's okay. Why are you doing it's... that? What? What? Since you've been thrown into this art directing, 
what do you what does it take to be an art director <laughs> <laughs> well from the three weeks i'm in i have no idea <laughs> So, like I said, it's just yeah. I'm I'm growing with it, and I definitely can say at the end of the year, I have a little bit of knowing what I could do with it. But yeah, let's see. Mm -hmm. Now, how important do you think it is to be a jack of all trades but a master of one? I definitely be a fan of being a specialist. Mm -hmm. um, I think that brings you more when you put your focus into just one thing mm -hmm. but I also believe that over time and the more experience you get the more you're doing your art you're getting slowly into a generalist um, because you know the first thing I did was sculpting right this was my main thing and then I put some texturing on it this is another field and then I put some um, UV on it and then I put some lighting on it and then I got a creature artist and then after being that and being focused on that I put maybe writing stories and then I put um, being an author or, or you know you put everything together the more and the longer you're doing this so yeah but I definitely say be more a specialist um, I mean when you want to do everything then do everything um, you can do whatever you want to. That's the beauty <laughs> of art, right? Yeah. There's actually not really a rule for that. It's just my personal opinion that um, works for me, being a specialist and slowly going into more and more and then you turning a little bit into a generalist. Yeah. That makes sense, cool. though, because you're known for that one great thing and then once you get really good at it, then you can dive into other things and it's especially if you've mastered one thing you should know how to learn other things a little bit faster so yeah, yeah that's true i mean it's also i think a lot of artists just get bored a little bit <laughs> when you're just doing one thing so that's why we have to do other things as well um to just be interested in the field and i mean it's so beautiful when you learn new things right so, I mean, I'm a big fan of animation and rigging too. Well, not really rigging because that's more technical, but um, animation, I really want to learn that um, or being a concept artist as well to create my own creatures, drawing my own creatures and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it's just, it's just better when you are interested in many things, but focusing on the main thing, what makes actually your income. Mm -hmm. Now, what advice would you give to aspiring artists? Um, I actually really like inspiring artists um, when you, um, you know, when when I have that advice that for an inspiring artist, you have to really take care of your mindset and thing. So. Um, this is something I highly recommend for everybody. Like I said, not only for artists, but um, especially for beginner artists. To survive in this industry, take care of your mind. Take care of your thoughts. Um, this is the most important thing um, for an artist. Yeah. Very good advice. Mm -hmm. It all comes together to the mindset. <laughs> it does in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Very, very true. You're going to change all of the game developers' lives, all the aspiring <laughs> artists, and be like, I wish oh, so. Lana helped us. Yeah. <laughs> I feel it. I believe it. one day you'll be on the stages uh, doing I mean, speech seminars. You'll be like, guys. <laughs> some some oh, TED Talks or so. TED yeah. Talk, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> true. I'm not sure if I can do that as an introvert. I'm always nervous, and oh my gosh, I freak out all the time. Um, yep, so like the art director, you just got to do it, right? <laughs> I think I think you could do it. Actually, yeah. If anybody, could, I think you should do it. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing stuff. Now, yeah. what is like a I guess a reality check? Like, what's the most challenging part of being an artist in the industry? Like I said, the mindset again, but I also think that. Um, a lot of artists struggle 
when it comes to um, competition and something like that, um, a lot of artists think that they have to be better than the other one. But that's not really true. I mean, just be you. I can't be another artist. Um, even when I do the same thing, it is still something different. And I think every artist put their heart into their art. And um, this is something everybody needs to understand that they shouldn't really compare to other people in general. I mean, the whole social media thing is something what gets a lot of struggle itself because you know you compare yourself with the most beautiful art with the most beautiful perfect lives and stuff and you really shouldn't do that and you have to take more care about social media in general you definitely have to use social media and not let social media use you this is something what a lot of artists don't really do right and I can definitely count me in. Um, I struggle with that as well. So uh, I'm definitely not perfect at all. Um, but yeah, to get some discipline about that, for example, um, controlling social media a little bit more is definitely something I can recommend as well. So that you use it for your work and to share it and to keep your words out and to help other people. This is very important, but don't scroll through it without your mind and just get more frustrated with each scroll um this, yeah something to definitely keep in mind mm -hmm. i agree a lot with that one because mm -hmm. we even did a podcast a while ago where there's a gap between beginners and then masters and all the beginners will look at the masters and be like oh my art's not like them but it's like there's a huge gap mm -hmm. between getting to that point and just focus on making your artwork better than yours yesterday than anyone else. Like, don't worry about anyone else's. Just make sure yours is better than what you did yesterday. Improve 1% every single day. So, so true. Mm -hmm. Also, I definitely have to say that your skills doesn't really need to be um, the high standard because I know that a lot of artists who don't have really the skills still make a lot of income. Um, it has all to do with... Um, marketing because i think as an artist it is so important to market your stuff um there was actually i wrote an article on patreon about that and um i don't know if you um know this banana taping on a wall thing and it was sold for one hundred twenty thousand dollars just a simple banana taping on a wall in a museum that's it. Oh, That's not really sorry. creative, right? What? Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't really have to do a lot. I mean, of course, you have to be good in your skills, but marketing is so important um, when it comes to doing it as a professional and for your business. So, yeah. Who Keep bought? your head into marketing. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I was the artist. <laughs> I mean, I guess we got to put like an orange on the wall or something. Gotta, yeah. Like, what the heck? All right. It's a crazy world. <laughs> it's a crazy world. There you go. <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> true. Uh, it's very true. But yeah. So usually near the end of a podcast, we'll do a little like challenge. Mm -hmm. So we want to give the game dev TV listeners a little challenge. It could be art related. It could be mental health related. It could be anything. Mm. So my challenge for the listeners is, ah, oh, that's hard. Mm -hmm. Take your time, it's fine. Um, I would say try every day for, I would say like 30 minutes, just mm -hmm. 30 minutes um, and take care of your mind because I think that's the most important part. Take some meditation. Um, Try to meditate every day, even when you think it's silly because, you know, it's kind of a spiritual thing or whatever. But I highly recommend, and this is scientifically proved as well, that when you meditate, then you get calmer, you, you reduce your anxiety and um, your depression and all that stuff. So if I would say a challenge, then definitely try meditation and try affirmations, talk mm -hmm. good with yourself. Even when it sounds silly, but 
stay in front of a mirror or something and say mm -hmm. something good or go on YouTube and there are some videos out there where you listen to affirmations mm -hmm. um, when you can't do it on your own. I listen to that oftentimes um, and listen to that for, I don't know, tw 10 minutes or so and just keep your mindset right. This is definitely my challenge for the listeners. I love that challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so I challenge, hope you are man. in too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but no, but thank you for coming on, Rowena. It was, it was awesome, very motivating, very, <laughs> thank uh, you so much. very helpful for all the game dev that TV students. And we'd like to end it off by handing the mic to you if you want to do any shout outs, any inspirational quotes, any plugins. But yeah, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, definitely want to. Before you just st stop recording, have to definitely shout out your book, uh, Rowena, which is "Your Heart Is Calling for the Artist Inside You." You can get it on our website. It's great. I've had a little read of it myself. We definitely recommend. A lot Thank of the you. topics we covered in this <laughs> are covered in there. So I hope I. The only, shout thing, out for you. <laughs> the only thing I want is to help other people. So yeah. Thank you're you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. I know you're probably tired, right? Why you to go to sleep? <laughs> well, I guess maybe I read something, but that's totally fine. I mean, I'm a gamer. I'm up all night all the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite game? You um, at the moment, yeah. it's still Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that's it. Thanks for listening. You can find all GameDev.TV courses at courses.gamedev.tv slash courses or in the show notes with a 10% discount. Get started with your game development journey today.